Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. This is Ferrari F355 Challenge on the Sega Dreamcast. Um, I'm absolutely useless at this game. I do love playing it, but I'm not particularly good at it. It is quite, um, it is quite a tough, tough little game, but um, it's very good. It's a very pretty game as well. Um, I remember playing this on a friend's Dreamcast. Uh, when it first came out and really enjoyed playing it. I didn't have a Dreamcast at the time. I had a PlayStation 2 and when they stopped making the Dreamcast, Sega then went on and released this on the PlayStation 2. Um, so I was really happy about that because I got to play the game without having to buy a console. Um, well, another console. Uh, as you can see, I'm not particularly clever at it but I mean I have fun when I'm playing it and that's all that matters and yeah I mean if you've got a Dreamcast or even a PlayStation 2 it's well worth checking out um, it's some good old fashioned arcade fun and I'm sure you'll uh, be able to play the game far better than I'm demonstrating here in this video but anyway what to chat about there's been a, a few things that's come up in the gaming world since I last did a play and chat video but I wanted to touch briefly on the whole um, VR thing, the virtual reality thing that Sony's jumped on board with their um, Project Morpheus and Facebook acquiring Oculus VR, which I don't think anybody really saw coming. Um, you know, Facebook is primarily internet based software, and to suddenly step into the hardware market was quite a surprise, though. I suspect for the kind of investment that they paid out, the $2 billion, they were probably one of only a handful of companies out there at the moment that currently have the available um, cash to be able to do that. Um, Sony have gone their own way. I think Microsoft have been a bit hesitant because I may be wrong, but I think that maybe they see virtual reality headsets as a bit of a conflict of interest with their Kinect device. Um, although they have subsequently confirmed that they are working on it. I, they may look to try and integrate both Kinect and a VR headset. I don't know how that would work. I've got no idea, but I'm pretty sure they'll figure something out. Um, Nintendo obviously do their own thing, so they were never going to be interested. So really, for, for companies that have um, any kind of interest in hardware, you were sort of left with... Um, Apple and Google, Google really being another outside bet, really. Um, and neither seem to show much of an interest in it. So I guess Facebook acquiring it was really just a company that was out there that could afford to do it. Um, and I, I don't really have too much of a problem with it. I do understand people's concerns, but... I think at the end of the day you have to really see the concrete plans for what they want to do with the device. Um, I think it can be a bit too easy to jump to conclusions about what's going to happen with it before any concrete plans have been unveiled. The, the cool thing for me is, is that it will get made. I think that the fact that it had been developed, the money for the Kickstarter was to get it out there, you know, get dev kits out there, get you know, the sort of prototype devices out there for game developers to get their hands on. I think that now it actually will get made, it will get manufactured and sold rather than just sort of fizzle out, which is always the danger with these type of projects. The, the danger there is is that they'll just ultimately fizzle out. Um, I think that's really cool and I think that um, you know, forget, just forgetting for a moment who's actually bought it and what they may or may not do with it. The fact that the product will actually end up in the marketplace at some point in the future, um, I think is a neat idea. And, I'm, you know, things might change, you know, it might go to embrace a wider market, but I don't think it'll turn its back on the gaming market. And if it does, there are going to be other options. That much is for certain, like you've got the, the Project Morpheus from Sony. I have no doubt Microsoft will step into the market at some point um, with their device. So it's not like there won't be alternatives. Nobody's got a monopoly on virtual reality, which is a good thing because it means that there'll be good competition 
you know, the, the companies will be pushing each other to do better, to, to make a better device. So hopefully this time round it won't be just a pipe dream, it won't be just the reserve of, you know, some Hollywood movies. It will actually get out there properly into the mainstream and, and it'll do well. So that's really all I've got to say about it about the virtual reality. I don't really know a huge a lot about it. I've never used a virtual reality device. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it as a gamer. I'm looking forward to see what they do with, with it from games points of view. Or, you know, I love movies as well. So looking forward to it from that, that perspective too. So the next thing I really wanted to touch on briefly is... is um, sort of a bit of I've done videos before where I've detailed a little bit of the background of, of my gaming and what have you in other in other videos and I just kind of wanted to briefly touch upon it here as well because I think that definitely gaming has changed um, not just in terms of technology but in terms of attitude from when I started playing it back in the, the early 80s well I mean I first encountered it uh, Space Invaders Arcade in 1979 when I was five years old. Um, so, you know, I kind of grew up in and around video games and without doubt I think that the internet has changed a lot of people's attitudes. There are a lot of people out there that do wind me up um, at the moment and they, they just hate on everything. It, it, it doesn't matter how good or how bad something is, they just hate on it. It's it's almost like they know they, they type up the, these blogs, some of them do videos, and they just tear stuff to pieces. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter who it's by, and it, it, it's very easy to get surrounded by that kind of negativity. I see it an awful lot on Twitter. I'm not really active too much on Facebook, but I do see it an awful lot on Twitter and it's like an infection you start to feel that way yourself you start to feel that negativity coming through yourself and it's like well why you know what why are people like this you know when I was a kid get you know that if a, you, you went and bought a game if it loaded that was the first step to success I mean most of my games came on audio cassette and, you know, that was a tremendously unreliable media. I mean, I had many games for many years that wouldn't load on a particular cassette deck I had. And until I actually bought um, this third party one for the Commodore 64, which had a little device on it that you could adjust the tape heads to get the maximum signal. I kind of went two or three years with games that just wouldn't load. Um, and I never got to play. Some of them weren't really worth waiting for, but some of them were really good and it was nice to be able to play them after like three or four years of having them and never once them loading. And a lot of them were part of compilations and the other games on the compilation loaded, but there was always like one or two games if it was a ten game compilation that wouldn't work. And if you took it back to the shop, it really didn't make any difference for some bizarre reason. I think it was probably something to do with <clears throat> the, the actual um, data, or something like that, on the cassette not coming through properly. I really, really don't know. But, you know, it was, it was really sort of frustrating. And you don't have that now. I mean, the... the the biggest chance you have of a game not working is if you bought it second hand and there's a scratch on the disc. I would, you know, it's not really something that is a consideration. And I'm just giving you an example, really, of how, you know, pe people really do nitpick on things now. I mean, gaming is evolving, it's a constantly evolving platform. And because it's an interactive platform, it's very difficult to please everyone. I get that. But I think that you look at, you read some reviews of games, especially on um, commercial websites, you know, and some of the things that they pull a pick apart on a game, it, it's just ridiculous. And maybe it's because having come through that generation, having come through that generation of playing games where, you know, there was some degree of ordeal to get the damn thing working, 
you know, you were sort of more appreciative of the game when you actually come to play it. I don't know. But it's almost like the people who are reviewing games or commenting on games don't have any real passion for it. They, they don't have any real interest in, in video games. And it, it's almost like unless it's something that grabs their attention immediately, then they're going to dismiss it. And it, it affects companies, especially in this day and age now. I mean, if a game gets a bad mark and doesn't sell well, you can virtually guarantee that that development studio will close. And the developers that have worked on that game, probably for two, maybe three years, is just fractured. And you lose a good development studio. I mean, many good development studios have, have gone to the wall simply because... Uh, the previous game that they released hasn't done well and even in the case where some games have done well they've got good reviews and they've got good sales these companies go to the wall and it's really frustrating I just wish people who profess to love playing games actually showed that it actually showed that with their reviews actually showed that with their comments look if a game's rubbish and it really isn't that good then fine you know, it should be called out for what it is. I'm not saying that everyone should walk around and be all smiley happy and, and just accept any old garbage. But I think when it's nitpicking, I think when they pick up on things that really are not important, that don't affect the gameplay in any way, shape or form, I really do think that these these guys should take a step back and think about is this really did that really affect my enjoyment of playing this game or am i just looking for something to nitpick and be hypercritical over anyway i just wanted to briefly touch on it because i'll revisit all these things in greater detail in future videos that i do but i just kind of wanted to touch on it uh, in this video because it is something that's been winding me up a bit of late anyway Thank you very much for watching this video and stay tuned to my channel for more videos to come in the near future. Thank you for watching.